Hello everyone, I'm going to talk about charge coupled device sensor in this video, CCD in short. So what people use to record image? In the old time, people hire painters to draw on canvas. And then we have films, but it's still expensive for normal user. Drone scanner was designed to scan on the object and convert it into electrical signal. After that, CCD was invented and it was used to take images and store in electrical memory. Quickly, this technology spread to many fields, astronomical imaging, medical imaging, and consumer cameras. With Hubble Space Techno Telescope, we understand the universe a lot. With medical imaging like X-ray, better analysis tools are available, and that saves people's lives. With consumer cameras, we save moments in daily lives easily. Notice that I didn't put cell phones in consumer cameras on purpose, because they are using CMOS active pixel sensors, which I will talk about them later. The, the, the history of CCD is quite funny actually. In 1969, Boyle and Smith at Bell's lab invented the CCD, which was called Charge Bubble Devices by them. It came out of a brief brainstorming aiming at avoiding loss of funding, and they depicted it as a memory device in that brainstorming. The picture, as shown at the, right, the top right, is Smith and the patent owner of CCD, Tom Sachs, that they are doing their work well at Bell Labs. Smith and Boyle also won the Nobel Prize in 2009 because of the invention. The first electronic camera that used a CCD image sensor was invented in 1975 at Kodak. But we know that Kodak filed for bankruptcy this year, probably because even though they invented the first camera, they didn't realize how influential it could be, but still focusing on the film business. From the photoelectric effect, we know that if we shine light on semiconductor, we promote electrons from covalent band to conduction band. However, that cannot separate holes and electrons, and they will finally recombine. If the light is shining on a pn junction, Electron will move to one side and holes to another side. Current is generated. Then we put a capacitor next to it, which acts as an integrator. Charges accumulate at the capacitor to indicate the light intensity. This form MOS capacitor, which stands for metal oxide silicon. If a fast DC voltage is applied to the gate terminal, higher than the threshold voltage, we break the thermal equilibrium and deplete holes further away than its maximum distance, called deep depletion mode. Thermal equilibrium can be simply understood as equal number of charges at the two sides of the oxide capacitor. The surface potential in the silicon near the oxide is lower than elsewhere. If we put this device long enough, electron hole pair will be generated and form the inversion layer. In MOSFET, inversion layer can be formed very fast because of electron supply from the source terminal, but we don't have them at here. Therefore, before the generation happens, a quantum well is formed. We can make an analogy of the quantum well as a water well. The soil has holes inside to store the underground water. If we dig a well and let time pass, underground water will finally come out of it and fill the water. The volume of the well is determined by the gate voltage and capacitance of oxide. After the well is created, we shine light on it and charges accumulate. Just like raining on the well and water accumulate in the well, if we drain the water out of the well and measure its amount quickly before underground water come out and affect the measurement, we can know the intensity of the rain just like the intensity of the light. After we have charges, we need to transfer them. We put several CCD together and put a phase shift clock on the gate. This is why it, it is called charge couple device. Only number zero is shined by light, while others are covered by metal in order to maintain the number of charges during transfer. At the end of transfer, the number of charges is read out by a charge to voltage circuit. We can see that it can act as a shift register, while the storage in the register is the number of charges. This is a 1D situation. 
but to form imaging sensor, we make it into an array as shown at the right. In order to save space, we make the green CCD from number 1 to number 5 very small, while keeping the yellow number 0 big. However, in order to maintain the depth of the well, a high gate voltage is needed. All the charges in each pixel are read out one by one by the same charge to voltage circuit. After forming the array, we need two more things to make it an imaging sensor. Micro lens are used to concentrate the light on the well, and green, red, and blue color filters that form Bayer pattern are used to distinguish the color of light. Nowadays, the biggest competitor of CCD array is the CMOS APS. CMOS APS doesn't need a potential well to store the charges because they are converted to voltage as a pixel. The generated charges cannot drive the loading capacitance in the charge to voltage circuit, therefore, an amplifier is needed at each pixel. It is not possible at early days due to large transistor size. However, even nowadays, the amplifier still takes some space in the CMOS APS. Therefore, the quantum efficiency in the CCD array is higher than the CMOS because we can see the pink area that can convert the, electro the photon to the electron is larger than the percentage in CMOS. CCD array also have low noise compared to CMOS because every charges are measured by the same circuits. However, in CMOS, because we have a amplifier and converter in each pixel, we will have a fixed pattern noise. The raw data is also available in CCD because the charges are read out and the data we get is the number of charges. However, in CMOS, all we know is the voltage that was converted. There are also some disadvantages in CCD. The high power consumption is because of the high voltage that we need to create the quantum well. Serial processing in CCD array also make it process slower than the CMOS because in CMOS all the data are converted simultaneously with all the amplifier. Lastly, CCD array is also cost inefficient because besides the CCD modules, we also have to have the clock generation circuit and the signal processing circuit and they are built with CMOS technology. So we need to have different chips that works together. But in CMOS, they can all be manufactured into one single chip and that reduces the cost hugely. Right now, there are still some limitations on the CCD. And there are the minimum light intensity, on-chip signal processing, and inefficient transfer of charges. In the sensitivity area, people have proposed Many other technologies like intensified CCD or electron multiplying CCD, they all use similar idea of multiplying the electron or the photon before they get to the CCD device, so that even in the dim environment, we can still sense something. And then, but however, ghost image and aliasing is still very troublesome. Ghost image is a dark thing that is after brightening, and aliasing is a dark thing next to the pricing, we can see on the right. They are both formed because of extra hole and char and electrons generation outside of the quantum well, and they will be wandered around. And if they move into the quantum well of a dark thing, and that will cause the problem. Another thing is the shrinking of CCD or all the imaging sensor. We know that the white light has a wavelength of 0 0.7 micron. And everything that is smaller than wavelengths cannot see the light. I have some postulate about that. Maybe we can borrow the idea from photolithography. They emerge lens in water to make the light wavelength shorter. Maybe we can reduce the pixel size by this way. Borrowing idea from bipolar CMOS technology, we might be able to combine the low voltage CMOS circuit with the CCD on the same chip in order to reduce the cost. And here are the references. Thank you for your time.